Good morning, nerd fam, and welcome back to Salt Lake City, Utah. We are midway through day three of our three days of power-packed coverage here on theCUBE. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined by, you guessed it, Rob Streche. Rob, I'm super pumped for this next I guest. Am. I mean, again, it's, the community keeps getting bigger, coming back together again. I think there's a lot of contributions happening. It's just so great and vibrant to see the community expanding and, and just stuff really moving. Yeah, lots of donations, lots of contributions. Yes. There's, a, there's a lot of stories there. Without further ado, I want to welcome our coolest hair guest to the show, Gail. Thank you for taking the time to hang out with us today. Thanks so much for having me on theCUBE. Yeah, very, very uh, all, you know, color appropriate as well. I am on brand. Yes. Everybody are setting yes. the bar. I'm feeling like Rob and I need to start. We, we do talk about our clothes. We're yeah. going to have to start talking about our hair color. Yes. <laughs> I have to tell you, the purple hair with Heroku works all day long. There you go. Yeah. Oh, I bet it's just a slam dunk. <laughs> do, do you get to expense it then? I wish. <laughs> I know. Isn't that, isn't that nice? Gail, we know that the world was watching your keynote, but in case you were taking a nap or walking the dog during those few minutes earlier today, can you give us a high level of what you shared? Sure, uh, at KubeCon, Heroku is announcing that we are open sourcing 12 Factor. 12 Factor is a set of principles for optimal app design in the cloud. Heroku has been curating and nurturing this community for 13 years. We believe, looking back in our experience hosting millions of apps in the cloud, that most of the principles are durable, but some of them need to be modernized. So we have uh, open sourced it as of this week. We have an initial set of maintainers and we are inviting contributions from folks at KubeCon. Yeah, that, that to me seemed to be one of the big things was, you know, bringing more in and getting more and, and taking it further. Because obviously for those who don't know, Heroku's part of Salesforce, which obviously builds large cloud applications. That's right. and, and so why is it important to actually, why is the 12 factor important to customers and to those people, the developers that are out there that are building these next to set me, of apps? Uh, 12 factor is about providing a predictable, repeatable way to run and deploy apps and also providing uh, app architecture that's reasonably portable. You know, my, one of my favorite things about open source is it's a great venue to work with the industry, even companies that might be considered competitive outside of open source. So I'm really pleased that we have AWS and Google Cloud as part of the opening set of maintainers. I, I, th I love that you just brought that up. I think the culture of collaboration here, we talk about it a lot, but it's hard to overemphasize how unique and rare that is when it comes to certain tools and projects, to your point. You know, it might be, it might be a different brand logo, but we're all on the same collective team when it comes to solving some of the bigger problems out here. I'm curious why y'all decided to do this now. Uh, well, well, uh, you might know, I think Bob Wise talked earlier about how we, uh, Heroku is replatforming on Kubernetes and in that, that's a massive undertaking for us. As you know, the Heroku platform predates all cloud standards. So as we are creating this next generation platform, for us it was a real natural time to look back at our heritage and our heritage is 12-factor apps and really take a look at those principles as we are redesigning parts of our platform. And so uh, we noticed that um, there was modernization to do, so it felt like a natural time to invite the community in here, and we had a great venue here at KubeCon North America. Yeah, it is, it is an exciting time, and it makes sense. I mean, I, I love that though. You, it, it's, uh, the term dog footing always is kind of a little weird, but it, you're, you're thinking, oh, if we're doing this, everyone else might need to do this too. Yeah. Yes. That's right, that's we, right. We try to drink our own champagne, if I may Ooh, nice. offer it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for that. You know what, I've needed a new one for that, that metaphor yeah. and analogy, and yeah, yeah. And drinking so your own champagne I is I think perfect. two things. First, you might not know that most of the Heroku platform is actually built and deployed using Heroku, and so as we are modernizing, we are really feeling uh, that 12 Factor needs some updates in some key areas, and so, um, and then the second point is that, um, Getting out in industry, you might, uh, you might know that we're a CNCF Platinum member now, so as we are coming back out into the cloud native community, boy, it feels great to hear from all of these stakeholders. Oh yeah. yeah. So when you look at 12 Factor and all of the different principles that are in that, where, where do you see some of, like if somebody wants to get involved and is, is looking at it, where do you think 
some of the modernization should really be focused? Or where, where are the rough sure. edges that you're looking um, at? I think for me, so I'm going to give you my point of view. As we have 12 maintainers now, and as we've been collaborating, I think there's lots of opinions. And I'm so excited to get started with those conversations. My opinion is um, there's a factor about logs and about logs as event streams. And that made sense in 2011, but now, and you can see from the show floor here, telemetry, total observability of your app, being able to emit metrics, all kinds of metrics about the behavior of your app, behavior of the, the host OS, and, um, and so that one needs an update. And so we're going to start there. And then the second one is clearly security. You know, when um, app developers do not deploy one single app artifact anymore, they deploy many. Those apps are interacting with each other. Um, 12 factor prescribes secrets as config and environment variables, and that just doesn't make sense anymore. And so I'm really excited to make room for a ton of new ideas in identity of apps uh, as they interoperate. <laughs> Do, do you see that that is actually where some of these other projects come in as well? Like you were talking about telemetry and we just had Taylor on and we were talking about open Otel, yeah, Otel and sure. things like that. We're huge fans of Otel. Yeah. And that yeah. seems to have a center of gravity to it and people have been, developers have been really embracing it as a way for them to have uh, observability in their applications without having to rewrite it per se. Uh, and, and a lot of the organizations here uh, that are in the observability space have embraced that. Do you see that there's other places where there's centers of gravity that will fit nicely into 12 factor? I think so. You know, the approach we're taking uh, with examples like telemetry is in the 12 factor project we want to prescribe a best practice and then we're hopeful that code contributions will be offered that are examples of that best practice. So in this case of telemetry, the, uh, that is the best practice. And then we'd love to see examples of apps integrating with Otel provided to the community. Um, yeah, sure, there are other examples. I mean, I think of you know, OpenSSF and, and security criteria for apps definitely as another way where we're going to prescribe best practices around app security. And then we'd love to see examples of that embodied in code. So what, what type of uh, maintainers are you looking for? Are you looking for architects who can come in and help kind of put the pieces together in these different, you know, different parts of the 12 factors? Or are you looking for actual devs that are coming in to bring in new code to some of these? Uh, or? I think we're looking really across the board. Something I love about this event in KubeCon is you have developers actively writing features, you have platform developers actively working in projects in the CNCF, you have DevOps and DevSecOps folks who are deploying and running code, you have analysts who are trying to understand the behavior of your app and your system, and I think I want all of those voices in 12-factor. To me, 12-factor covers running, deploying day one and day two, all right? The, the creation of your app, the running of your app, the deploying and the managing and the scaling of your app. So I'm really hoping actually to get a diversity of voices across those specialty roles. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I, I think again, when you look at the different you know, pieces and of 12 factor, like dependencies and like we, there was uh, on stage, I think just before you was talk of S-bombs and thing, or maybe it was yeah. right after, I, I can't remember the order now. But when you start to look at that, like open SSF and a lot of the, uh, I guess you could say policy procedures that they're pushing for and they're out there working with the regulations. Is that where you see some of that, like, because you, you mentioned them, some of those dependencies and security, not just from a, not just the pure security like uh, part of it, but like the, when you look at the dependencies and dependency yeah, mapping. Yeah, so when we are thinking about depend, I mean, first of all, we're at the very beginning. So I'm giving you my point of view and some of the maintainers' points of view, but I'm really excited to invite more people in and hear, hear more points of view. I think when we're talking about dependency management, we are thinking about how do you attest to the identity of a backing service for an application. Um, in Heroku, we see our customers deploying what, instead of 
ones, a service that is one star, they're deploying constellations of services that are working together for some you know, greater good. And it's the making sure that all of those stars in this constellation uh, can attest to who they are as they're talking with other services is really important for us. So that's what I'm thinking about with dependency management is really that runtime making sure that services can talk to each other in a mesh and can do that securely. I love that constellation analogy as so well. So do I, I love that. That was star. good. I'm going to call you next time I need a, a, a term described in a magical way. Between I you and Bobby really... Allen, I feel like there's a whole, there's a match made in heaven in an analogy world. I want to totally shift the conversation, which Great. is classic, Savannah. <laughs> We've had Betty and you both on yeah. the show this week. Clearly two really brilliant, strong, and exciting females. What would you say to someone learning, you know, 50% of this room is new at KubeCon for the first time. Lots of folks watching at home, like we said, the world was watching you on the keynote stage. What would you say to someone who isn't a Brooks Brothers jacket wearing white male who's watching this and is curious about joining this community and getting involved or learning more about the project. I would say there's plenty of room for all kinds of people in the CNCF and at KubeCon. I mean, I am a hardcore dev. I have two computer science degrees. For the first six years of my professional career, there were no other women working in engineering with me and I think those days are over. I am so proud in Heroku at the diversity of humans we have. And I'm proud of that because it's good for, it's good, it makes me feel great. You know, I love being surrounded by people from all over the world, but also it makes for really strong teams and a much better product that's stronger products, able to, able to be deployed in more markets. And so uh, I love that it's bet the Betty and Gail show at KubeCon <laughs> this year, actually. I'm really proud of that. Thank you for noticing. It feels good to see women yeah. like you yeah. sitting across from I'm me I'm trying to raise a female nerd army, to be perfectly honest with you. <laughs> that I feel I, like is my reason for being in the, in the tech industry. You know, quite frankly, we need it now more than ever. Uh, yeah. And, and I, I think it is important to, to celebrate and to elevate, you know, I mean, even after this, like I was saying, we have the deaf and hard of hearing working group on this afternoon. Mm -hmm. This community and, and, and Heroku, it sounds like, I love hearing that. You don't hear that enough. We, we, tech diversity has gotten a little bit better. And, but I still feel like there's a big barrier there despite the, the opportunities that, that do exist within this community. I'm kind of wondering if someone could learn more about your team if they end up coming in to be a maintainer of this project hmm. and contribute to the culture. I'm thinking of how we're recruiting your maintainers, maybe recruiting for Heroku, you've got a whole thing going on. What's next for you and the team now that you've been able to release this into the wild? Uh, the next for 12 Factor is community development. So finding more maintainers, welcoming folks into the community. We got a big bump in our Discord membership during my keynote today, which was Ooh, exciting. Oh, that's fun, that's great affirmation. Yeah. And so the Love next, that. it's really to dig in, find, um, find our active community, and then dig into those factors. If, if they want to find out more, where, where should they go? Yes, I mean. github.com slash 12 hyphen factor. Okay. And Thank you for naming it something simple with <laughs> words that are spelled accurately. I got you on simple, <laughs> accurate naming. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's also important because most people in tech, you know, some English is their first language, some is their second language. And so the more clear and simple you can name a thing, the more ubiquitous it will become. Thank you for listening to my TED Talk. <laughs> Why do you think I called it out? Because it, 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 it I, pains me sometimes when I think about the challenge of learning a new technology and then it's named some crazy amalgamation of letters and numbers sometimes and you're thinking, oh, okay, that's communicating a lot to someone who's just, just learning. I, I'll, I'll just throw it out there, the one that multi-Qs and the way they spell Qs, K-U-E-U-E, -E -E, we're both dyslexic and you start to go with all of these U's and E's and K's and I'm like, okay, it's blowing my mind. But to your point, it's like there's, for people who, uh, English is not always the nicest language to try to learn. If it is your second language, trying to understand and how to do all the spelling and find things. I think that tough. also goes to your inclusion point, Savannah. Yeah in communicating yeah. in a way that's easy for folks coming with, you know, English, for better or worse, is the de facto language of tech. And so we can get very precise, simple, technical English that makes it much easier for folks around the world to participate. That's actually really important to me. 
I couldn't agree My more. team will definitely tell you that, that I'm like, we can say that more simply. You can use fewer words. Uh, there's a, a great book called Writing Without Bull, the S word. And, and it's one of the best books for writing because you just pull out all the stuff that doesn't make sense. Don't overcomplicate it. And I think that's actually a lot of what this room has in common. We're all trying to, to simplify or make more accessible technologies and tools and, and all of that. So mm -hmm. the language is a really big part of that. Let's talk about the Heroku team for a second. Sure. What's, what's next for y'all? Well, we are hard at work. Um, Shocking. Yes. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but we have been shipping like gangbusters. Uh, yeah. And we are on fire, and I am so proud. We, um, you should be. Uh, we will be, in a couple of weeks, starting to talk about our replatforming on Kubernetes. Um, it's a really exciting time for us. I am, um, I've seen it. It runs well. It's so exciting for our customers because they get the benefit of a Kubernetes platform, so performance and yeah. scale easy or scalability. We are able to provide more, our uh, app model are called Dynos. We're able to provide a lot more of them because we are have rebased now on Kubernetes. So more variety for our customers, faster cold start. I mean, I'm super excited. So we're going to have a lot to say starting in December and then I hope it's rolling thunder from there on out. Oh, I love this scale. Yeah. That leads me right into my yeah. next question. <laughs> What do you hope, hopefully we get to hang out with you and Betty at, so. at KubeCon in London, or I mean. Oh yes, definitely. Or I'm just going to come, you can are you barrier based? We can all hang on, we can all hang on the bay. What do you hope to be able to say when we're in London at the next KubeCon, or, or in the spring, that you can't yet say today? I have an idea. Are you I asking can... me to say what I can't say, Savannah? <laughs> That's an A plus. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we do love a good yes. scoop, but I'm more, I, I'm, I, I kind of have a suspicion you might talk about some of the feedback you've gotten from the community and some stories you'll have Definitely for us to share Definitely, we there. are going to have updates about 12 Factor. Yeah. That's right. I think that's a great um, uh, milestone for us to be taking the time, between, that is what, April? Yeah. The time between now and April to find, the, find this community, grow this community, and then be able to report back out about what we've learned and next steps for the project. Well, we can't wait to talk all about it. It's going to be an exciting be year. Gail, thank you so much for the insights, for the inspiration. Congrats to you and the team. We can't wait to hear the thank stories. Thank you. Thanks for having me here. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, and shout out to your wonderfully diverse and awesome team. What's up, Heroku team? We're thinking <laughs> of you here in Salt Lake City. Rob, thank you for another great segment. It was fantastic. It's easy when you have great guests. So. No, it's yeah. It's it feels easy. like a cheat code. Yes, it is. Smart, it is brilliant people code. feels like a cheat code. Yes. And thank all of you for tuning in and hopefully not cheating on whatever it is you're doing in your life right now. We're here in Salt Lake City, Utah, coming to the end of day three of KubeCon North America. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching the Cube, the leading source for enterprise tech news. <laughs>